I, Mayor Matt Girding, call the September 16th, 2024 City Council meeting for the City of Summersworth to order. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Pepin. Here. Vincent. Here. Gibson. Here. Parody Cotton Zero. Here. B Show. Here. Witham. Here. Goodwin. Here. Cameron. Excused. All right, Council, uh, Councilor Pepin will lead the Council in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask without opposition uh, that we move up the certification of election results uh, to this point in our meeting. Uh, that way, once results are certified, we can invite our newest counselor, uh, Ms. Laura Berry, to be sworn in and join us for the majority of tonight's meeting. Um, so I ask that we move to agenda item 16C, which is uh, to certify the return of votes for the special municipal election held on September 10th, 2024. Um, what are the wishes of the council? Councilor Witham. I move that the council certify the votes. Right. As I second that. All right, Councilor Witham moves that we certify the return of votes, seconded by Councilor Vincent. Uh, discussion? All right, seeing none, if you are in favor of certifying the results, you'll state by saying yes. If you are not, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Pepin. Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parody Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. All right. The results are certified, thank you. Um, I now invite up Councillor Barry uh, to take the oath of office with our city clerk. Could raise your right hand, please. I state your name hereby affirm. I, Laura Barry, hereby affirm. That I will faithfully discharge the duties. That I will faithfully the discharge the duties. Incumbent upon me as at large city councilor. Incumbent upon me as at large city councilor. In accordance with the Constitution. In accordance with the Constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the charter and ordinances. And the charter and ordinances. Of the city of Summersworth. Of the city of Summersworth. Congratulations, yeah. welcome. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. And congratulations and welcome. All right, that will bring us to back to agenda item three, um, which is the recognition of indigenous peoples, our native ancestral Americans. This meeting takes place on Indikina, which is the unceded traditional ancestral homeland of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki peoples, past and present. We acknowledge and honor with gratitude the land, waterways, living beings, and the on the book, the people who have stewarded Indikina throughout the generations. Item four on the agenda are any scheduled public hearings. We actually have two tonight. Um, first up is a public hearing for Ordinance 4-25, which is a transfer between departments for fiscal year 2024-2025, which if approved would transfer 32,585 from capital outlay to the community support section of election, uh, excuse me, elected leadership within the general fund. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to Ordinance 4-25 tonight? Anyone who wishes to speak? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Uh, next up, we will open up a public hearing for Ordinance 5-25, which is supplemental appropriation to provide funding for the Community Action Partnership of Stratford County to assist in the operation of the Home for Now shelter, which if approved would appropriate $17,415 from unassigned fund balance to community support. Is there anyone who wishes to speak towards Ordinance 5-25 tonight? Anyone wishing to speak to Ordinance 5-25? All right, seeing none, I will close the public hearing on Ordinance 5-25. Um, next up, we have item five, which is comments by visitors. Summers West City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinions and views at council meetings. In accordance with Council Rules 7-C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the council wishes to suspend the rules. Speaker shall not enter into a debate with any person, the mayor, council members, city manager, or department heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight? Yeah, come on up. Uh, make sure you uh, state your name and the ward in which you live, please. Hi, my name's Ryan Powers. I live in Ward 1, and I just want to come up and introduce myself. I'm up for nomination for the Historic District Commission. Um, I wanted to introduce myself to all of you. Um, I moved to Summersworth about two years ago and started a family this year and just trying to 
get more involved in my community. So just hope you take that into consideration. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Anyone else who wishes to speak tonight? All right. Seeing none, we will move on to agenda item six, which is approval of the consent calendar. Chair will obtain a motion to approve the consent calendar, which includes the minutes of the city council meeting held on September 3rd, 2024. Do I have a motion? Yes. Uh, thank you. Councilor Pepper moves that the consent calendar be approved, seconded by Councilor Gibson. Question for the council is the adoption of the consent calendar. If you are in favor of the motion, you will state by saying aye. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. All those in favor? Aye. aye. All those opposed? <coughs> All right. Ayes appear to have it. Ayes have it. And the consent calendar is adopted. Um, next up, we have uh, comments by city councilors. Are there any comments by city councilors this evening? Yes, Councilor Witham. Uh, first off, welcome Councilor Barry. Uh, welcome to the uh, at-large side of the table. Uh, looking forward to your contributions and participation. So, um, and Your Honor, if I could just make an, uh, a request here, uh, when you feel appropriate, if we might also consider uh, skipping to agenda item 16, uh, the vote regarding uh, continued discussions with the town of Burke regarding uh, the emergency water connection. We do have a couple of guests from Berwick, and instead of them hanging in for our whole meeting, if we could dispense with that uh, at some point, that would be appreciated. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate the update. Thank you. Other council members wishing to speak? Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so, without objection, we will jump to agenda item 16 B. Uh, no objection being made. Um, so, this is under other in our agenda. It is a vote to support continued discussions with the town of Berwick, Maine, regarding the possibility of an emergency water interconnection agreement with the city of Summersworth. What are the wishes of the council? Councilor Witham. Yeah, I'd like to uh, move that uh, we support ongoing continued discussions regarding this matter. I'd like to second that. Councilor Witham moves for uh, support of the discussion, seconded by Councilor Vincent. The motion before the council is to support discussions with Berwick regarding an emergency water interconnection agreement. Discussion. Yes, Councilor Witham. Thank you. Uh, I think I reported out at our last meeting that this item got brought up initially at the Public Works and Environment Committee at our last meeting. Um, uh, the Berwick uh, town manager and planning director were in attendance uh, as they are again here this evening. We did ask them to come tonight in case other counselors had questions, so thank you for doing that, taking time out of your schedule. Um, uh, I think we're all aware that the town of Berwick uh, has had on and off uh, some uh, water distribution uh, interruptions for a variety of reasons, uh, and uh, uh, interconnection has uh, now surfaced again as uh, a discussion point. Um, it, it has been discussed in the past. I think the most serious discussions that uh, this council has had are around that uh, were back during the uh, downtown improvements project uh, some 10 plus years ago that also included the reconstruction of the uh, bridge over to Berwick, Maine. Uh, at that point in time, we discussed the installation of a uh, meter valve box and infrastructure at the bridge, uh, but for a variety of reasons, maybe part of which were cost, uh, the town of Berwick did not uh, move on that at that time. So the issue has sort of sat dormant for this amount of time, but again, the issues of late have brought, brought it back up. Um, uh, it's our understanding in talking with the Berwick town officials, and again, they could uh, provide more info if you wanted, uh, is that they have uh, come into some grant money uh, to explore this interconnection. Uh, so that would look at the engineering. Uh, truth be told, whether that's at the bridge or at some other location or across river crossing, uh, that's part of the engineering study that would take place. Uh, but they don't want to uh, spend these uh, grant dollars uh, on these engineering uh, funds if we're going to say at the end of the day, yeah, we're not interested in, in hooking up. Um, uh, I think it's somewhat clear to me that the, the benefit of this project clearly is for the town of Berwick, less so than for the city of Summersworth. Uh, I think as we all know, we have a, a, a strong interconnect 
uh, that we funded with grant monies as well with the city of Dover uh, that sits up adjacent to Willan Pond uh, that could support either community. Uh, this would be added redundancy for us, uh, but the real benefit would be for the town of Berwick. Uh, I think we, we all shared at the committee level that this was something that was viewed as uh, the right thing to do. It's the, the right neighborly thing to do. Uh, and there was support at the committee level. So that's sort of the Reader's Digest backstory of it. Uh, I don't know if Manager Belmore has more to offer, but uh, that's where I'll leave it. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Honor, and uh, thanks a lot for coming out. And uh, yeah, it's the, it's the neighborly thing to do. Um, uh, you know, um, you know, if we help them, they may help us. Uh, you know, it's, it's, that's what you do. Uh, and I'm going to be in full support of this. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? City Manager. <clears throat> I guess the only thing I'd add is uh, they gave us some level of assurance that uh, there would be no cost to the city. If there was a cost, it would be uh, de, minimis, de minimis, a very small amount. Thank you. Other discussion? Yes, Councilor Barry. I actually will mimic uh, the other two councilors before me that I think that because this is a very close neighbor of ours, I would hope that they would do the same for us when we have to come to them for a possible issue in the future, any kind of thing that we wouldn't say no to a conversation at this point. So I'm in favor as well. Thank you. Other discussion? All right. Seeing none, if you are in favor of continuing the discussions, you will state by saying, or not our discussions, but discussions with the town of Berwick, sorry. Uh, you will state by saying yes. If you are uh, not in favor, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Barry? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parody Catanzaro? Yes. Misho? Yes. All right, discussions with the Town of Berwick are supported. Thank you. And thank you for being here, folks from Berwick. We really appreciate it and your partnership as well. All right, that will bring us back to agenda item eight, which is communications. Tonight we have one communication, which is, excuse me, um, correspondence from former city councilor Donald Austin. City Clerk, will you please read his letter? To Mayor Girding and honorable members of the City Council, I want to congratulate Councillor Barry on her election as, as an at-large member of the City Council. The voters have decided to begin to move the Council in a different direction and I intend to respect their decision. I wish all of you the best as you move forward. During my campaign and at the polls, I spoke with many residents while a few had very specific questions. Most told me, one, they are angry and confused about the recent property valuations and two, some will no longer be able to stay in Summersworth. I am sure some of this was due to the letters being received only five days before the election, but I am equally convinced that at least a portion of them are legitimately concerned. Please don't write these off as random complaints. I believe this is more significant than that. It may be time to reconsider our elderly exemption limits to recognize the extraordinary hardship that our elderly residents will endure as a result of the new valuations, despite a corresponding reduction in the tax rate. Also, I would encourage you to take a long and long, excuse me, a strong stand when developing the 2025-2026 budget. Any further increases that will impact the tax rate must be held in check to the extent possible, both for the city and the schools. Much is happening in Summersworth, and more needs to be done to ensure people know that. Many challenges still exist, and I have full confidence that you will set your priorities and address them with the best interests of the city in mind. I have truly enjoyed my time on the City Council and am honored to have had the opportunity to serve Summersworth in this way. Sincerely, Don Austin. Thank you. And thank you to uh, former Councillor Austin for his uh, continued support of the city and all the work he's done in the past for us. I know he will certainly not be a stranger. Um, all right, that brings us to item nine, which is presentations of, and excuse me, <laughs> I can't talk tonight. Presentations of petitions and disposal thereof by reference or otherwise, we have none. Um, brings us to item 10, which is the mayor's report. Um, I would first like to welcome our newest council member, Laura Berry, uh, who was voted in uh, to the open position of at-large city councilor during our most recent special election, which was last Tuesday. So excited to have you join us. Um, I know that your experience and knowledge will serve you very well um, and your commitment to the city as well. So uh, thank you for being willing to step up. Thank you for running. Um, and I'm sure uh, there's plenty of folks here that will uh, have you, you know, be there for you if you need to lean on them. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, I know I remember when I first jumped on, it seems daunting and overwhelming, but you, I think you'll pick it up quick. I really do. 
Um, and so with the addition of Councillor Barry to the council, um, I'll make, be making a few appointments uh, tonight just to accommodate changes. Um, so first up, I'll be appointing Councillor Barry to fill the roles on standing committees that were vacated by Councillor Austin and by former Councillor Messier before him. So Councillor Barry will now sit as a member of Public Safety Committee, uh, Public Works and the Environment Committee, and the Finance Committee. Um, I will also be promoting Councillor Pepin uh, to Vice Chair of Finance to fill the role that was left there. Um, Councillor Barry is also appointed as a member of the Joint Commissions of the School Board and City Council, as well as the Chair of the Historic District Advisory Committee, uh, which was a mayoral uh, formed committee between uh, Historic District and City Council. Um, also, Councillor Goodwin has requested to step down from his position as Council Representative on the HDC, Historic District Commission, and I'll be nominating Councillor Barry uh, with her vast exper expertise in this area to fill in in this role. Uh, this is up for a vote tonight um, by uh, council under our nominations, appointments, and elections, so you'll see that there. Um, I also want to note um, that uh, there's going to be another change to the agenda. The agenda is kind of in flux tonight, so I apologize. Um, but we will add an agenda item under 16 other, another other. Um, this is going to be agenda item uh, 16 other D which will be about setting polling hours for the November general election. So please, uh, we will get to that when we get there, but please be ready to discuss and vote for that. Um, it's just a state requirement that we make sure we do that uh, in advance of that election. Um, and I believe lastly tonight, I just wanted to talk a bit about um, the increase in the valuations. Uh, there was a lot of discussion online. Uh, I got a lot of phone calls. I got a lot of emails about uh, the <laughs> property assessment. And so I wanted to kind of just take a few minutes to go over my own feelings, uh, my own knowledge and understanding of this, these changes, and hope that by the end I can kind of uh, quell some of the nerves that residents may be having about the uh, property assessment. So. Um, as was explained at the last city council meeting, uh, much of the property in the city uh, has increased in value between about one and a half to two times um, from when the city conducted our last reevaluation about five years ago. Uh, this is in part a feature of the housing market that we kind of are living in now uh, nationwide, but certainly here in the seacoast region of New Hampshire, uh, property values have spiked. Um, here in Stratford County, for example, uh, I did some digging. Property values have gone up from approximately about 300,000 throughout average in Stratford County in 2019 to now averaging close to 600,000 uh, for the county. So doubled essentially. Um, these dramatic changes in property value are primarily due to supply and demand. Uh, there has just been a housing shortage. Uh, vacancy rates here in the city are less than a half a percent, uh, which is astoundingly low. Typically a healthy market is I think it's like five to seven percent, um, and we are way below that. Um, and so this tightened supply means that demand becomes kind of centered around a very small number of available properties and with fewer or less supply as you know basic economics would uh, tell us it increases demand, which increases the price of housing. Uh, this feature, feature of the market is something that I and the City Council here in Summersworth have been keenly aware of, and we are actively working to tackle this issue uh, to the extent that we are able. Uh, I know I personally have formed the Mayor's Housing Task Force, which is actively working to increase the housing supply here in the city through zoning and regulatory changes. Uh, the city is also actively working on a brand new housing chapter in partnership with the planning board as part of our master plan, uh, which outlines goals for housing here in Summersworth. Uh, and within the past couple years, we've actually approved and are working to allow up to about 300 new housing units in Summersworth, <coughs> which is uh, nearly half our goal to uh, kind of achieve by the year 2040 for housing. So we're really working aggressively towards uh, allowing for more housing to be in the city and hopefully to kind of uh, let a little bit of that pressure off uh, uh, on the housing market. So though the housing crisis is certainly a major part of why values have increased, I'd also like to uh, think that certainly many of the positive changes the city has undergone in the past five years has contributed to the increase in value. 
Uh, we've renovated our schools. We've invested in our first responders. We've built a brand new police station, uh, improved our roads and sidewalks, and really tackled this aggressively. Um, these are all attractive things that we've done which make our city more desirable. Uh, they're much needed improvements, and I think I see them as a really positive step that has worked to make our city more positively uh, directed and positively positioned. Um, I think, like many here today, I you know have known of the value of Summersworth for a very long time. Um, I know we're a hardworking uh, people, group of folks. Uh, we're generous. I think, like more than any other community that I've ever lived in, we put community first and our neighbors first, which I think is one of our kind of gems or our assets that we have here. Um, but in some sense, I'm a little impressed and relieved to see uh, that the sense of value that I've known um, is actually kind of now tangible and accessible. Um, and I know it's scary, but it, it's kind of putting a number on something that I think we've all been talking about and working towards for a while. Um, and so like to put it more bluntly, and I know I hate this just as much as the rest of you, but we are no longer that city known as Scummersworth, you guys. We've, we've moved past that. Um, and I, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for the potential. Um, I certainly, though, do want to caution you know, the city council about this new potential. Um, it can come with its own curses, uh, so to say. You know, I'd hate to make the mistakes of other cities in our area, uh, like Portsmouth or even Dover as of late, who I feel have changed faster than they could keep up with. Um, and we do not want to lose that kind of special something that makes this city unique um, and the reason why I want to live here um, and I think many others. Um, and I certainly don't want to push <laughs> residents out who uh, bring so much value to this community um, because I don't want it to become too expensive too quickly. Uh, and I know that this is a delicate balance and that's why I formed the Mayor's Housing Task Force and why we all have been pushing for trying to create more housing in this community because we know we want to be able to keep people here. Um, I also want to caution um, residents tonight about reacting too strongly to some of the information that's been made available because not all of the information is out yet. Uh, we just got one piece of this kind of tax puzzle uh, with our reassessment. And I want to be clear that uh, until we have all of the pieces, we can't really make an uh, assessment as to how much tax rates or tax bills will increase uh, in the future. Um, I know property assessments is just one piece. We have to consider in um, the tax rate and how uh, the changes to the most recent approved city budget all work together to kind of get your final tax bill in the end. Um, I want to remind folks uh, that we worked on the budget back in April, um, and um, oh, I lost my place, I apologize. <laughs> um, so yeah, in the situation that we have uh, before us today, assessments and values on property have certainly gone up, right? Uh, typically when you look at assessments and values, the tax rate is almost like the balancing feature that gets you to that budget number that we passed back in April. So in this case, if assessments and values have gone up, the balancing feature in the tax rate should go down. Um, and if uh, folks have seen the memo that has been circulating uh, online and was released by the Summersworth Finance Director, Scott Smith, it would indicate that uh, we have a new estimated tax rate of about $18.5 per thousand. Uh, again, I want to stress that this is estimated. We will not have the final uh, tax rate number until the state of New Hampshire releases this later uh, this fall. Um, but it does serve as a pretty close approximation of what the city's new tax rate will be. And it will accompany this new assessment that we've all received. And so again, increase in assessment, decrease in tax rate. And hopefully it will ensure that most people don't see a super large fluctuation in what they end up paying in their actual bill. I want to be clear, um, there are folks who will possibly see increases in their bill. It is, it is uh, more than likely. Um, but I'm hopeful that the changes to your bill are going to be more likely coming from the budget that the city passed rather than the reevaluation. Uh, again, we back in April, we passed the budget, we overrode the tax cap, 
and approved a budget that increased our general fund expenditure by about 1.75 million, if I hopefully have that number right, which is about 3.5% of the previous year's budget. Um, so again, during this process, City Council was transparent about this increase. I know we deliberated very much about it for many, many months, uh, and we did not take lightly the fact that there was a tax cap override. Uh, council was thoughtful, uh, we were careful, and we made sure we were only overriding for very necessary budget uh, services that were required. And I think, funny enough, the major reason that we had such a low tax cap amount back then was because it happened to be a reevaluation year. Um, so when setting that budget, est estimates during the budget process kind of informed this council that the increases uh, in the budget will likely result in about an average of a $300 increase in yearly taxes for the average homeowner. So again, I think there's been num a number of numbers that have been thrown around online about how much people's taxes will go up. Again, back when we passed the budget, we were informed it would be on average for the average home about $300 of an increase over the course of a year. So again, I know getting these letters can kind of be scary at first, but I really do encourage anyone who's having issues or problems with their assessment value or just questions in general to please schedule a meeting with our assessor so you can go over this with them. And I've heard really, really positive reviews from folks who have scheduled these meetings. Um, and I think they come out of them having a much clearer understanding of how this actually all ties together and what their tax bill may in fact look like, which is not what they, I think, initially uh, assumed when they got their assessment. Um, so certainly we'll keep you all updated once the tax rate is officially set by the state of New Hampshire later this fall. Please check back in with us, email us if you have questions once that process goes through. Um, if you notice any anomalies in your assessment, please reach out. Um, and really just know that city councilors, myself, City Hall staff are all here to make sure that you understand what you're doing um, and how much you have to pay and what it means for you and your family, all right? So thank you to everyone. Please don't hesitate to connect with us. Um, and I hope that helps to provide a little bit more clarity to what is really a complicated process. Um, and that concludes my mayor's report. Um, so. Next on the agenda is item 11, which is reports of standing committees. We have the Finance Committee first, uh, Chairman Witham. Uh, no report, but there are a number of agenda items percolating. I've been in discussion with the city manager, so we're probably gonna try to tee up a meeting between now and our next council meeting, so uh, members of that committee can look forward to an invite in the coming week or so. Thank you. Uh, next is Government Operations Committee, uh, Chairman Mishu. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. I just got the preliminary draft on this and it's quite lengthy, so I'm going to try to make it as short and sweet as possible. Government Arts met on September 11th, uh, 2024 at 4.15. First on the agenda was to approve the minutes from June 25th, 2024. Second on the agenda, we had uh, Mr. Alan Gould, a representative of the, from the Municipal Resource Inc. on possibly utilizing his services for a search for a new city manager. We had a long, in-depth conversation with him, and and he, he explained there's like three tiers that his company uses. One is a general search that basically they put on an application, they get all the people that apply for it, give it to the city, and we go through all of it. And there's a second level, a third level. The third level is a very comprehensive one which the committee basically agreed that we're gonna be utilizing, in which that is uh, interviewing the city councilors and department heads to gather input towards developing an ideal candidate profile and a challenge statement and ability to uh, establish an email address to allow opportunities for the residents and members of the community to provide their input. Second is develop timeline for appropriating and planning. And third, posting an advertisement for 30 days on a number of professional platforms, including international city slash county management and ICMA. Fourth is an essay to utilize to target what the city wants based on interviews with city councilors and department heads. Fifth is the preliminary background checks are completed by MRI utilizing web searches and phone interviews. And sixth and final is a preparation of interviews 
with the opportunity, with appointing authority, which is city councilors, will be made uh, the pool of the candidates that will dwindle, dwindle down to three to five candidates. So we requested the city manager to go into negotiations with, um, with MRA to develop a uh, contract that uh, we'd be able to utilize their services. Um, that timeline, we really won't really need them. Probably, you probably won't be hearing from them basically till late winter. So it usually takes their searches anywhere from 30 uh, to 60 days properly. So stay tuned because they eventually will get to us and we'll start working on a process here. And next on the agenda was uh, at the resolution 125, council rules and amendment in which we discussed that once again. We got all the feedback that all uh, city councils had for their input and we did them make some changes. Instead of uh, requiring for people that are importing to come to the meetings, we changed it to recommended. And instead of advertising it for 60 days, we're gonna advertise it for 30 days. So that won't be coming up at this meeting, but this will be coming up at the next meeting for council consideration. And next on the agenda is uh, disposal of city property, which is uh, jail cell doors that was in the former police station. I talked to uh, the president of the historical museum and he's happy to take one of the jail cell doors, a rectangular shaped one. And the rest will be up the discussion this evening of possibly uh, letting the city manager put it out for bid. And we had a few items on miscellaneous, but not much here to report on that. So uh, we adjourn roughly about 4.15, 5.15. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Your Honor. Yes. Just yes. A few questions, if I may. Sure. Go for it. Uh, with regard to the city manager search. So if I understood it correctly, we, we have enough time to do this. We're not going to be rushed. Sounds like not, they don't want to start till midwinter so yeah, well we were brought to in front of our committee to actually get the ball rolling so in which we make sure that we're able to utilize these people because they're really good in what they do and this time here they can also oh, hold off i'll let the city manager speak oh sorry yeah sorry go ahead yeah they, they say it's too early to advertise they want to uh, they suggested advertising january february um because people uh, it's just too early to get all the people in the pool, somebody may be a finalist and get another job. So. Got it. Okay, thank you. And uh, no, I like the approach, the, the, the third level with all of the, the features. Uh, did they provide sort of a rough cost estimate between the various levels? Yes, they did. Um, it all depends how much we utilize. Uh, let me see. Uh, they, they, it was around 21000 Yes. Yes. Um, but it's, it'll be less than that. I already have a figure. Um, it'll be in the resolution. It's a little over 13000 will be in the resolution. Bargain basement. Thank you. <laughs> we, we do have to pay for all the ads. That'll be yes. another couple thousand or whatever. There'll be some other sundry costs associated. Thank you. All right. Uh, next is Economic Development Committee, uh, Chairman Goodwin. Uh, there has been no meeting, but I would note that the uh, RFP for one Winter Street has... Uh, elapsed the period for a response. The city did not receive a response to that RFP. Um, so during our next Economic Development Committee meeting, we will uh, discuss uh, further steps or recommendations regarding uh, that site. Um, but other than that, no report. All right, thank you so much. All right, next up is Public Safety Committee, Chairman Pepin. I have nothing to report, but we do have a meeting scheduled for October 1st at 4.30 4 p.m. here at the City Council Chambers. Thank you. Next is Public Works and the Environment Committee, Chairman Witham. No report. Thank you. And last is Recreation Committee, Vice Chair Mishu, since Councillor Cameron is uh, absent tonight. Uh, we have not met, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, brings us to item 12 on our agenda, which is reports of special committees. Are there any reports of special committees? All right, seeing none, we will move up to the city manager who will deliver his manager's report. Thank you, Your Honor, members of council. I offer the following comments this evening. Um, I would note uh, on unfinished business that um, 
Uh, Betsy Andrews Parker, Community Action Partnership of Stratford County CEO, is in attendance when we get to the uh, votes. She is available to field questions if council is so inclined to waive, waive rules. Under new business, Ordinance 625, regarding the amendment to the Noise Nuisance Control, Ordinance Chapter 13D, um, to authorize the city managers to grant waivers of this ordinance. Council Goodland had requested that uh, I provide an amendment and present it to the full council for consideration. Uh, while I was developing that, Public Works and Environment ha had a, uh, a meeting, so I brought it up uh, to the Public Works Committee, and they voted to recommend this ordinance uh, amendment to the full council. As usual, I recommend a public hearing be scheduled for the next meeting on Monday, October 7th. And um, I attached, a, hopefully, a red light copy of the proposed amendments. Under other, um, a vote to approve the request by Unitil Corporation to waive the noise nuisance control ordinance since uh, they may be beginning work prior to the second reading of uh, shifting authorization to the manager. Uh, put this on the agenda and provided you some information from uh, the Unitil rep explaining the need for waiving this ordinance, particularly at the intersection of Blackwater Road and Route 108. Uh, during the time period of late September through October, we didn't give exactly that time frame, but it could be a couple of weeks getting through the intersection. And uh, I'll jump down to surplus city property without objection, as mentioned by the Government Ops Committee Chair. With their support, I'll offer uh, uh, to donate the attached square jail door to the museum. And the rounded jail doors will be placed on sale on Govdales, which we've had quite a bit of success on with surplus equipment. I had no idea what the value is going to be, but I, I suspect there'll be some interest. Without objection. <laughs> uh, Willing Drive, uh, Tri-City Emergency Warming Center. I did attach a memorandum from uh, Fire Chief Matt Moore regarding a site visit that took place on September 4th with Fire Department staff from Dover and Rochester. Uh, Council Pepperin, as uh, chair of the uh, Public Safety Committee had requested that an up-to-date inspection be completed, and that was done, and you have that report. Regarding the solar project, I attached a memorandum in your packet that provides an overview of recent development regarding the construction of the solar array at the Superfund landfill site by Amoresco. Uh, action will eventually be needed by the City Council to resolve an issue with the state for this project and to move forward. Um, try to give uh, just a scintilla of information for the public is uh, we had the groundbreaking um, but back in the 1970s the city accepted a grant through the land water conservation fund folks at the state level which is actually federal money uh, we did s some 210,000 or so improvements to the s former St. Laurent Park um, half of it was a grant and half of it was, was city funds um, it required the city to uh, agree to keep that park open forever. Um, unbeknownst to staff, unbeknownst to myself, uh, EPA was pushing us to, uh, at least encouraging us, maybe not pushing, might be too strong, but it's certainly encouraging us uh, that we might have to close the park unless we did some substantial investment uh, in, in the uh, soil cover, et cetera. So in 2011, the city voted to decommission the park. Um, when we had the groundbreaking ceremony, apparently uh, state officials were alerted that we were not no longer in compliance with that uh, agreement to keep the park open forever. So that is the stumbling block right now. What is apparent after talking to the state, and I'll have more information after we have a conference call with Amoresco and the state officials uh, this coming Thursday, they gave me some information. Some of it I need to um, uh, go back over and get clarity to. Uh, what we might, they, they do not object with the, the uh, project moving forward. And they're willing, they said, at least at the, the, the Zoom meeting, that they're willing to write a letter in regards to that, provided the city promises to enter into a conversion process where we have to identify land that is not zoned recreational um, either city land or purchase land, and then zone it recreational and keep that open to the public, and then we'll be in compliance and, uh, and, and so forth. 
Uh, back in the 70s and so forth, there was no requirement to place this deed restriction uh, or this restriction on deeds. So Imaresco had, did, had completed a deed research and they thought it was free and clear of all encumbrances. Uh, currently, they, they have instituted a process where there would be a restriction on any parks that entered into this program. So I guess I gave you more of a longer version than a shorter version, but hopefully you can connect some of those dots. And I'll be, after the conference call, I'll be working through committee, most likely, uh, to bring up some resolutions on how we move forward and identifying some land uh, that we might be able to utilize. So it's, it's a little more complicated than that, but hopefully uh, uh, folks followed along. Any questions, please reach out to me. Uh, I did provide a memorandum from Michelle Mears, our Director of Development Services, regarding a Housing Opportunity Planning Grant that, without objection, I'll uh, authorize her to move forward on. Without objection. Invest New Hampshire Demolition Grant Awards. I did provide you copies of these, the grant award notices received from the New Hampshire Department of Business and Economic Affairs. Demolition Grant Funding Awards were selected for the following projects in our city. 67 Elm Street, up to 150000 85 Elm Street up to 200,000 and 200 Main Street up to 150,000. Um, and that would conclude my report this evening. Your Honor, members of council, thank you. Thank you so much. Brings us to agenda item 13, which is nominations, appointments, and elections. Under nominations, appointments, and elections, in accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, the following are being brought forward for a vote tonight. Uh, Ryan Powers for appointment to the historic district as an alternate member for a term of three years and a mayoral nomination of Laura Berry as city council representative to the historic district commission. Uh, what are the wishes of the council? Council Parity Catton Zero. Uh, move to approve both nominations. Thank you. Councilor Parity Catton Zero moves to approve both nominees. Seconded by Councilor Gibson. A uh, question for the council is on the confirmation of Ryan Powers as an uh, appointment to the historic district as a commission as an alternate member and Laura Berry as city council representative to the historic district commission discussion. Uh, Councilor Goodwin. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank uh, Mr. Powers for coming and um, being here. I'm available for, uh, for comments if we have questions if we had any and uh, letting us put a face to the name. Uh, welcome to Summersworth. Glad that you uh, want to participate in in uh, our city government and um, and on the HDC. So uh, I'll be in support of uh, your nomination. And uh, I'm also uh, excited to have Laura Berry joining us this evening um, as our newly seated city councilor. And um, given my various committee assignments, I'm also excited that she'll be able to uh, hopefully take my uh, seat as the council representative on the HTC, and uh, she is certainly more qualified than I uh, to represent the city well in that regard. Thank you. Other discussion? All right. Seeing none, if you are in favor of the motion, please state by saying aye. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Ayes appear to have it. Ayes have it. Nominees have been confirmed. All right, next up is item 14, which is items that have been laid upon the table. We have none tonight. Brings us to item 15, which is unfinished business. Uh, first up, we have um, ordinance 4-25. The chair will recognize the clerk for a second reading on ordinance 4-25, which is transfer between departments for fiscal year 2024-2025, which, if approved, would transfer 32585 from capital outlay to the community support section of election uh, elected leadership within the general fund. City Clerk. Ordinance number 425, transfer between departments for fiscal year 2024-2025. Thank you. Ordinance 4-25 have been read a first and now second time is open to further amendments. All right, seeing no amendments, I will look for a motion on Ordinance 4-25. Councilor Witham. Move for its adoption. Councilor Witham moves for the adoption of Ordinance 4-25, seconded by Councilor Goodwin. A motion for the Council is on the adoption of Ordinance 4-25. Discussion? All right, seeing none, if you are in favor of the adoption of Ordinance 4-25, you'll state by saying yes. If you are not, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin. Yes. Barry. Yes. Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Parody Cotton Zero? Yes. Michaud? Yes. All right. Ordinance 4-25 has been adopted. 
Uh, chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on ordinance 5-25 supplemental appropriation to provide funding to the community action partnership of Stratford County to assist in the operation of the home for now shelter which if approved would appropriate 17,415 from unassigned fund balance to community support city clerk ordinance number 525 supplemental appropriation to provide funding to the community action partnership of Stratford County to assist in the operation of the home for now shelter Thank you. Ordinance 5-25 have been read a first and now second time is open to further amendment. Seeing no amendment, I will look for a motion on Ordinance 5-25. Councilor Witham? Move for its adoption. Councilor Witham moves to the adoption of Ordinance 5-25, seconded by Councilor Goodwin. Motion for the Council is on the adoption of Ordinance 5-25. Discussion? Okay. Oh, yeah, Councilor Brinson. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so as a state representative, I reached out, I tried to talk to the state. Um, in regards to this, I tried to use everything in my powers to do what I could, but it just goes to show me that I have no powers, apparently. <laughs> um, thus, thus, one of the reasons why I did not rerun for state representative, not because of um, not being able to support my state and the people, just that it was just an ongoing battle, which is another avenue, um, which I'm not going to go down to, just a small comment, but... Um, I tried to do the best I could, um, but uh, I, w I would just urge uh, everybody to support this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <sighs> thank you. I was on the Finance Committee, and I abstained from this, not because of community action. They do great work, uh, and the need is there, and not because the need isn't there, and, I, and that I want to support it to a point. But sometimes I wonder where our tax money is going and what we're us as councilors are supposed to support. Um, I know we're supposed to support our schools, do our roads, do us uh, water and everything else that we support. And sometimes um, I feel like we get dumped on a lot. And the state, that the state or the or the county doesn't seem to debat, do their portion. And I think that's where I held back on my vote on it. Is simply because I'm totally upset. I'm totally upset with the homeless thing also. Uh, I think the project is a lot bigger than, than what we should be taking on. I think it should be spread out a lot more evenly. Uh, so I will be supporting it, uh, but I, I, I still have, we talk about people wear, worrying about their taxes and stuff like that, and I have to wonder, where do we cut and where don't we, don't we cut? Um, and People are hurting, people are hurting out there, and that's probably the reason why this is here is because they have no other place to sit and stay. So um, I guess I just wanted to voice my opinion on that. I, I, I'm, I'm struggling with this one very badly. Thank you. Other discussion, Councilor Witham. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I certainly can appreciate Councilor Pepin's frustration. Uh, I think it's one that's shared by perhaps all of us here. Uh, the, the issues are frustrating. Uh, they're challenging uh, and certainly the support that we get at the local level to help with some of these frustrating and challenging issues is slim to none uh, from our partners at the state uh, I hesitate to use the word partners because they don't partner with us on much of anything uh, I will support this this is quite frankly the right thing to do uh, it's a one-time ask uh, and it's going to have meaningful impact. This is a uh, programmatic shelter, so it's not simply just a Band-Aid. This is going to have an impact. Is it going to be as far-reaching as it needs to be? Heck no, right? This is a much bigger issue than this will solve, but it's a little piece, and that helps. And again, if, if they were asking for ongoing funding to support this, that's a more challenging conversation. I would agree, Councillor Pepin. Uh, it's not one-time money that can have impact. Uh, I can jump both feet in on this. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? Councilor Brady Gatton Zero. Yes, thank you. Um, I couldn't agree more. Uh, when it comes to uh, the support that we could get more from our county and state. Um, and this also, to me, dovetails with the reevaluation conversation, the tax conversation. Um, and I'm never going to miss an opportunity to 
point out that it's it's not like the state's just sitting on a bunch of money that they're not giving us. The state of New Hampshire has this antiquated tax system that very few states have to deal with where we have no broad-based income, no broad-based sales tax, income tax, uh, tax on marijuana. There's, there's all sorts of revenue streams that we just don't have here in New Hampshire. Um, and that makes it really, really hard because we have very important things that we have to fund, like our schools, like our public safety, et cetera. And it all comes down to property taxes, which, which really creates this, this terrible system. Um, but I wonder if, since uh, Betsy Andrews Parker is here, if we can, do I need to suspend the rules? Um, I'd love to ask her a question. Um, without objection, I don't know if we need a vote necessarily, but awesome. okay. Thank you. Come on up. If you don't mind. <laughs> Good evening. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Is the microphone on? Oh, is, is it? Light? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm. I'm curious. Just could you share with us a little bit about the gap um, that this shelter is providing? Um, I know that in Summersworth, you know, we currently don't have a uh, shelter that provide something like this. So um, can you speak to specifically what this facility will do for people, uh, including those in Summersworth? Right, so the, the focus of the shelter is families and children. Um, that there's, you've heard me talk before, there's a huge need for single men, but there's actually a, a, a large need for families. Um, I did just confirm before um, I came here tonight, we've actually moved three Summersworth families out of hotels, long-term hotels. One. Um, client, we moved into permanent housing um, over with one of our senior housing, and two families have been moved into our shelter um, working. Um, we made a decision for our, our six open rooms to rotate through the city, so you've, you've had your fill. Um, we did have two Summersworth families not show up, so now they're back on the back of the list. I don't know what's going to happen um, with human resources. We did also get approved by the city of Rochester to expand our winter capacity. So we're looking at using the basement to um, put in anywhere from 12 to 14 more families that come. So on a Friday afternoon, as people are presenting and there's, they can't go to the warming shelter or if that's not open or there's no hotels that we can put them in temporarily for that. And we did also get approval to expand the shelter. Um, there's just not enough family space here. My friend's place is open, but we're working to expand all that. Awesome. And Thank you so for much. the financing for this, um, Councilor Vincent is right. We have been um, locked out of being able to apply for state funding, for shelter funding. So we have to stack the funding um, of up to $800,000 for the next um, year. So we are out. We did, just so everyone knows, um, there was a recent notice of federal award application with this, um, with the state of New Hampshire. Um, we wrote to triple all of our housing support programs that we had in there. So we went from a program of $200,000 for permanent housing, we wrote for $800,000. Like we wrote for everything we could to increase that housing capacity because shelter is not the only answer. Awesome. Yeah, I definitely appreciate that. That's, um, it's, as you know, an issue that we struggle with here all the time. So it's, it's exciting that this relatively small piece of one-time funding is going to help with that ongoing issue. That Absolutely. We and we did request funding from every community um, in um, Stratford County as well. So not just the cities, we requested from all. So this is the first of many evening meetings I'll be at. <laughs> thank you so much. And, yeah, thank you. And fun fact, there are in fact unspent state funds that are the gopher funds that are going to be returned to the federal government and not used yes. on this project. So Absolutely, even add though. to the frustration. Even though we did ask to have them in an appropriation oh. and we work with New Hampshire Housing Coalition to do it, they will not reappropriate to any of the existing <laughs> shelters or the new ones as well. And if so I may, Your Honor, how much was those funds, please? Did oh, it's a couple million dollars. A yeah. couple million dollars couldn't fund you because they have to send the money back because it was a glitch in your filing, correct? Uh, no, um, it wasn't a glitch in our filing. I want to be very clear about that. The I thought I apologize. No, no, no. I just just speak. Um, um, the predecessors chose not did not apply for that funding. So w because we were not in that round, we are locked out for two years. I would have applied for it. I applied. Even for though we begged. Yeah, for the for the money. They will not let us. They back sent in. the money back. Yeah, they did. Thank you. Well, not to make this.
state bashing tonight, but right. it's well, not hard. It's no, it, but know. we have a really great relationship with Louise. I mean, that's how we ended up getting um, one of the clients into permanent housing. Um, we do coordinate a cor uh, community terror team meeting three mornings a week with all of our providers. We look at the people who are most at risk and pull them in. This has been a real big effort of all the providers in the area getting ready for the winter time. So I appreciate it. Yes, Councillor Barry. Can you give a little insight for me on if this didn't go through, how many families are being displaced that you? even if you got this funding, how many families and children are not getting relief right now? Right, so I mean, we had a wait list of 15 that had already had interest, and but we have, we have phone calls every single day. And then we also work with Crossroads of trying to transfer some of the families from our area and trying to swap families. So anyone that comes from Portsmouth and they have our families, we swap them back out. So that's it, we're just, it's, it's a long list, and particularly before school started, we try to get them in. So right now, our families are residing in uh, Farmington and Rochester, that's where most of our families are residing in long-term housing. All right, thank you. I can get you a better number of the wait list if you would like, Councilor Barry. Yes, I would, please. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Other questions for Ms. Betsy Andrew, Andrews Parker? Oh, we have her? All right, thank you. Right. Really, thank you. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Right. And other discussion before we move on to our vote? Right. Seeing none, um, if you are in favor of the adoption of Ordinance 5 25, you'll state by saying yes. If you are not, you'll state by saying no. Uh, City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Barry? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parody Catanzaro? Yes. Michaud? Yes. All right. Ordinance 5 25 has been adopted. All right, brings us to resolutions tonight. Um, again, we'll move past resolution 1-25 because as we heard, it still remains in committee. Uh, brings us to resolution 10-25. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 10-25, a vote to support a one-time funding request for the Community Action Partnership of Stratford County to assist in the operation of the Home for Now Shelter using a combination of funding from the American Rescue Plan Act and unassigned fund balance which, if approved, is accompanying le legislation for the two previous ordinances to allow for the use of the funds. Um, City Clerk, will you please do the second reading? Resolution number 1025, a vote to support a one-time funding request of the Community Action Partnership of Stratford County to assist in the operation of the Home for Now Shelter using a combination of funding from the American Rescue Plan Act and unassigned fund balance. Thank you. Resolution 10-25 has been read a first and now second time is open to further amendments. Seeing no amendments, uh, I will look for a motion on resolution 10-25. Councilor Witham? Move for its adoption. Councilor Witham moves the adoption of resolution 10-25, seconded by Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Uh, motion before the council is on the adoption of resolution 10-25. Discussion? Seeing none, we will, uh, if you are in favor of the adoption of resolution 10-25, you'll state by saying yes. If you are not, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Barry? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parody Catanzaro? Yes. Michaud? Yes. All right, resolution 10-25 has been adopted. Uh, brings us to agenda item 16, which is new business under ordinances. Uh, first up, we have a uh, first reading on ordinance 6-25. Chair recognizes the clerk uh, for a first reading on ordinance 6-25 to amend chapter 13D noise slash nuisance control, section 13D4, exclusions and exemptions to add section 13D4C waivers to the uh, to authorize the city manager to grant waivers of this ordinance. City Clerk. Ordinance number 625, to amend chapter 13D, noise nuisance controls, section 13D4, exclusions and exemptions to add section 13D4C waivers to authorize the city manager to grant waivers of this ordinance. September 16, 2024. The City of Summersworth ordains that the ordinances of the City of Summersworth as amended be further amended as follows. Amend Chapter 13D, Noise Nuisance Control, Section 13D4, Exclusions and Exemptions by adding the following. Section 13D4, Exclusions and Exemptions. C, Waivers. The City Manager is authorized to grant a waiver of any section of this ordinance that pertains to both public and private construction activities as necessary and deemed to be in the best interests of the city. Waiver requests are required to be submitted in writing and should provide as much detail as possible to include applicant, description of the work to be performed, its location and proposed schedule, specific request as to associate, associated noises, 
and associated equipment involved, length of waiver request and rationale need for any temporary relief from the ordinance prohibitions. All waivers are required to be submitted 30 days in advance to the city manager's office. The city manager may waive the submittal timeline in their sole discretion based on any extenuating circumstances or emergency need. This ordinance shall take effect upon passage. Sponsored by Councilors Paul Goodwin, David A. Witham, Kenneth S. Vincent, Martin Pepin, Donald Austin, approved city attorney. Thank you. Ordinance 6-25, having been read a first time, will remain in first reading until the next regularly scheduled meeting, at which, uh, at which time we will have a public hearing. Um, that brings us to other under uh, new business. Uh, we've already done B and C, so congrats everyone. We'll start with A, which is a council vote to approve the request by Unitil Corporations of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, regarding waivers of Chapter 13D, noise nuisance control, to allow extended work hours for gas main installation during the hours of 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the intersection of Blackwater Road and Route 108 during the time period of late September through October. What are the wishes of the council? Councilor Goodwin. Uh, to adopt the resolution. Uh, or uh, to grant the waiver. Grant the waiver, yeah. excuse Councilor me, yes. Goodwin moves to grant the waiver, seconded by Councilor Parity Cotton Zero. Um, motion for the council is to waive Chapter 13D for Unitil Corporation. Discussion. Councilor Witham. With a fair amount of hesitancy, I will support this. Um, uh, I, I have come to witness some of the work of Unitil in our community, uh, and uh, it varies from being good to extremely poor. Uh, I think this will benefit our residents in terms of helping with traffic flow, but my concern is with the uh, <coughs> vendor, in this case Unitil. Uh, I'll support this because it helps our residents, not <coughs> because it helps Unitil, uh, and I'll offer more comment on them and other utilities during my closing comments. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Other discussion, Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. And I know this is in regards to the noise ordinance, but I'm going to go off of uh, Council Witham's comments. Their work is terrible. I'm sorry. The divots in the road are not are not um, up to par, so to speak. Uh, we spend millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars on these roads, and they come in and they carve it out, and we're kind of caught because we have to. We we really should play good with them because you know that's a service to the people to reduce rate from propane to natural gas and so forth and i understand it's the noise ordinance so i'm not going to continue but yeah I'm, I'm not happy with it either thank you councillor goodwin uh, if i may i would uh, appreciate the city manager just speaking to this briefly to ensure that staff is in agreement with the recommendation to uh, provide this waiver at the hours requested city manager If I'm incorrect, I'd ask that uh, Director Bavinsky, he spoke directly to Unitil, I believe. Um, I believe we're, we support it for those hours. Thank you. Other discussion? Great. Seeing none, if you are in favor of granting the waiver, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Goodwin? Yes. Barry? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parody Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. With him? Yes. All right. Uh, waiver, excuse me, the waiver <coughs> is granted. Thank you. Um, we will jump to our D under this. This was a newly added item, just as a reminder. Uh, this is a vote to set polling hours for the November general election uh, required by the state of New Hampshire. Uh, what are the wishes of the council? Councilor Parody Cotton Zero. Um, I have a question. You can, yeah, point of order is fine. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So my point of order is, um, is this, did I hear you say that this is time sensitive enough that you could not do this at the next meeting? Correct. Okay. Um, oh, your mic is off, I believe. Oh, thanks. Yes, the question was uh, that this is required by the state uh, that we have to do it now as opposed to the next meeting. I was a little bit disappointed that we didn't have it in the packet just because it's nice to be able to have people have a chance to come out and weigh on this. Um, however, we we do this you know several times every election year. Um, I would be in favor of just for consistency's sake keeping it seven to seven. Um, and I, I have not heard from folks that there's a really big um, 
gap that that is not covering. Um, I always think the more hours, the better. But of course, we have to balance that with the, the volunteers that work those hours. So I would propose uh, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. to keep it in line with our past several elections. Councillor Parity Canzaro makes a motion to set the polling hours from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., seconded by Councillor Gibson. Uh, so again, uh, the motion on the table is to set the polling hours from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Discussion from others? Seeing none, I will say, uh, as the mayor, I set the agenda. This is a total oversight on my fault. I take full responsibility and I apologize. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Um, but yes, that's my bad. Um, all right, so again, motion on the table is to set the polling hours from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, if you are in favor of the motion, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councillor Parody Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Barry? Yes. Pepin? Yes. <clears throat> Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. All right, polling hours for the November general election are set from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you. All right, brings us to agenda item 17, which is comments by visitors. Summersworth City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinions and views at council meetings. In accordance with Council Rule 7-C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the council wishes to suspend the rules. Speakers shall not enter into a debate with any person, the mayor, council members, city manager, or department heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak this evening? Anyone who wishes to speak? All right, seeing none. We'll move on to uh, item 18, which is closing comments by council members. So Barry, as our newest member, I invite you to go first. Thank you. Um, with um, the person to my left being absent, I will do a little bit of a plug for Don't Trash Summersworth. They are meeting Saturday the 21st at 2 p.m. at 18 Lilac Lane. Uh, the city public works by the sand collection area, so please do come out if you can. Um, it's really great to see how much they're collecting. In some cases, very little, which is awesome. I'm happy to know that, but it's always great to have more people than not. Um, I wanted to say thank you to all the warm welcomes, um, especially hearing from Don Austin earlier. I know he will stay involved, which I'm very much excited about. Um, he definitely has brought years of service, and I hope he continues to do so. Um, one of the things that has definitely been on my mind with our, today's packets and other things, um, it's a very full encompass what we're dealing with. We're dealing with housing shortages, we're dealing with homelessness, we're dealing with exorbitant prices escalating. I myself have known many people who have lost apartments at no fault of their own. They paid, but people have taken them back for needs of themselves, and they've had to move outside of our community because they go into a line of people trying to get to those same apartments. And it is just a need that I think we really need to look into, which I know we are doing with other um, committees and different things. So it is, I'm happy we did pass the resolutions we did today. But one thing I would like us to possibly consider is the reassessment um, of our properties maybe doing so more often than every five years because I myself have bought properties when it was in a housing bubble. Um, I bought it from people who it broke and so they couldn't afford it anymore and I got it for very little. And I think we're probably gonna run into that again in the near future, hopefully a lot farther out than I'm anticipating, but I think if we can do assessments more often, it will help with those rises and falls, so. But otherwise, thank you for adding me to the council. <laughs> thank you. Thank the voters. It wasn't us. <laughs> uh, thank you. All right, Councillor Pepin, you are next. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to thank uh, the city manager and the mayor for actually, uh, and, and the people that did inspect the building at uh, the Walman Center. Um, I have mixed feelings, and I'm, I'm kind of in a roundabout way talking out of both sides of my mouth at the same time here. Um, I asked for the report because I, as I drive by, I'm an ex-firefighter, so I kind of have an idea a little bit of the codes back when I was there. I know things have changed a little bit and stuff like that. And I was kind of curious to see what the oxygen load is. And if you read the, the chief's memo, it, it, with all the chiefs there and stuff like that, they come up with an oxygen load of 50 <coughs> people. Um, I've got six pages here of the reports of the number of people that stayed there last winter. Uh, some of the figures were from 80 to 90, 
92, 95. There's one night there was over 100, there was 100 people there. Um, that's probably 35 to 40 more people that are allowed in that building. Um, I don't know if we're gonna have the same attendance this coming year. So it's like I say, it's like a double-edged sword. I'm kind of sorry I asked for it because um, we know what the capacity is. I don't want to be at the door and turn around and tell a person that's freezing outside that they can't come in. It puts their staff in a very difficult situation, whoever runs the place. I don't have the answer, but I do think that it, when the people come into the Warmer Center, I do think that, that they deserve the life safety code that everybody else gets in the country. Um, so. I don't know what the answer is. Um, like I say, I, in one part of me, it kind of scared me because I drove by and I'm saying, man, when they said, when I read the report one time and it said 100 people, I know that had to be overpacked. Um, and, and what do you do? I, I really don't have the answer on that at all. But it does scare me that we overpacked it, packed it one night by over 50% of what the occupancy load is. That's scary. Um, I think we do have an obligation. We have an obligation possibly to, to try to find some way of dealing with it. I've heard that this is supposed to be temporary. I understand that cities do have the right to go over certain boundaries because of emergencies. Um, but this has been, last year it was almost a nightly occurrence. It is an emergency. So I, I don't know what the answer is, but I do think it's a problem that someone has to address down the road. Um, I keep hearing, like I said, uh, only one more year, only one more year. Um, I'm, I, I, I just don't know what the answer is on it. So I just wanted to put my opinions in on it. Um, so that's it for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. A couple of quick things. Um, as far as the reval goes, um, reassessment, um, I did have a really good meeting uh, with... Uh, the city manager and Scott Smith um, explanations of this type of process and I think next time and, and I understand what the definition was when I asked them we should have accompanied the uh, the new assessment with some type of letter you know why didn't we get a letter that caused mass hysteria you know um, people are freaked out uh, in some ways about their reval and their reassessment and uh, uh, and I understand why, because we don't know what that number is with the tax, what, what it's going to do to the actual tax rate. So they try not to put it in because they don't want to be wrong. Um, but I think something um, to keep um, uh, people in tax, so to speak, the, the citizens of Summers Road, just to keep them um, well informed, maybe some type of letter should have went out. We'll, we're learning as we go, so to speak, I guess. Another thing is, uh, this is something for Public Works. I, I sit on it, um, and I'd like to see it put on the uh, the next agenda. Is you know, I drive over to the Public Works uh, building, and um, we have those lovely dumpsters over there. And then, so some of them are on the pavement, and some of them are not. You have to drive your vehicle off the pavement onto dirt. Uh, maybe we can do a little fix up on that, you know, not spend millions, but uh, spend a little money to dress that area up because what's happening is uh, when the cars, vehicles drive off the edge, they're cracking the pavement. Um, and it's just, I don't know, we have such a great looking city and we're such on a, on a, well, on a well, we're so, we're, on, we're well on our way, I'm trying to say. Uh, i just like to see maybe we can address that a little bit, you know. Um, do I mean poor concrete pads? I don't know. Maybe that might not be the answer, but maybe that's not a bad idea. Um, but just kind of make it look a little better than what it is. I, I understand it's recycling, but I just think it looks um, trashy. Get that? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Gibson, you are next. I understand the concerns that people have with the reassessment um, after our little talk at the last meeting I was not <laughs> really looking forward to seeing that letter and the letter just confirmed my fears so but um, it's a reality of life in the seacoast um, 
the scary aspect of it is, and uh, we've seen this too many times in the past, is there are people in for a rude awakening somewhere down the road because these price levels can't be supported in this area. Um, every every housing bubble has bursts at some point, and what I'm really concerned about down the road is how much it's going to affect people that are trying to get into the housing market now. And it's a scary thought for young people. Um, as to the homelessness and the need for shelter, um, I think the cities need to get together and come up with a plan to approach this because piecemealing it constantly is not going to work. And unfortunately, the state is not going to step up to the plate on this. Uh, unless we have a title change with this election, um, it's going to be the same old uh, routine. Uh, with the state not providing necessary funding for things that should be their responsibility. It's, it's not a Summersworth problem, it's not a Lee problem, it's not a Rochester problem. Um, it's a statewide problem and it needs to be addressed as a statewide solution. And I don't know what the old men up in Concord think of it, but they maybe ought to uh, spend a night on the street and see what that feels like. Maybe they might feel a little better about doing something. Um, and thank you to all the people that voted in the primary election. It's important that in primaries that you get out there and vote because that's what sets up the general election. Um, I hate, <laughs> I'm really not looking forward to this general election. But anyways, um, and one thing I would say to our state representatives is I would really like them to see seriously considering going to nonpartisan primaries. Um, we pay for the primary elections. We have to deal with, with what that involves as far as providing people to staff them. So why are we letting the parties dictate how we go about picking the people to represent us? It shouldn't be that way. Um, the states that have gone to nonpartisan primaries have seen the huge gap between the two sides start to narrow because of the way that they do it. And that's what we need in this country is find a way to narrow the gap between the two extremes. And that is the easiest, most direct way to do it. And that's my spiel for tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Yes, thank you. Uh, welcome, Laura Berry. Um, congratulations, Councillor. It's great to have you here, and I look forward to working with you. Um, I want to echo what you said about the about the reassessments, and I wonder um, uh, if the city manager and staff could um, let us know with some rough figures, maybe at the next meeting or soon, what it would look like uh, cost-wise to do reevaluations every two years, every three years, you know, are, are there ballpark figures? Um, I did understand at the um, reassessment presentation last time that it would cost us more to do it more frequently, but it may very well be worth it. Um, so I would just be curious to see what that cost is. Um, and in terms of action there, um, I don't know, uh, Mr. Mayor, afterwards, if that needs to be referred to a specific committee to just sort of talk out what that would look like and whether it is an appropriate thing uh, for us to look at, 
also don't know if that's um, would tr require an entire charter review or if that's just in the ordinances. Um, but again, just I think it is definitely something to look into. Um, uh, the other thing is I wanted to, um, I was very excited to see today in the news that one of our Summers Worth students was named uh, a student of the week, uh, Abby Lambert. Um, and I was just reading about her bio and fosters. Uh, she was named a student of the week and it sounds like she just is an incredible, well-rounded student, president of the class, et cetera. Um, and I just wanna say it's really wonderful to see our students making regional news and setting such a good example. Um, that concludes my comments for this evening. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Michu, you are next. Mm, thank you, Anna. I just want to welcome Councilor Barry, the City Council. And also I want to invite the residents of the City of Sunsworth to go out and check out uh, Cafe Anatolia. They had a soft opening today. And their hours are from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. And do not get confused. It's not Anatolia, the restaurant on Main Street, but this is Cafe Anatolia up on High Street, right next door to City Hall. So I encourage the residents to go out and support our newest business. Thank you. Can't wait. Oh my gosh. Next up is Councilor Rhythm. Thank you. So we hear in schools about uh, bullying. Uh, it's a terrible thing. Um, it sometimes is not dealt with quickly enough or aggressively enough. Uh, so with that, I want to try to quickly and aggressively deal with bullying that's occurring at the city level uh, from our, I'm gonna use the word loosely, our partner utilities. So bear with me, I'm gonna go on a little bit of a tour. So we spoke about Unitil, so why don't I start with them? Uh, recently, Unitil did some gas line work on High Street between Franklin and roughly Garden Street. Uh, I appreciate them upgrading the gas line utilities. Uh, I appreciate them tackling that stretch of road because we're looking to do the sidewalk there and then the whole road. So getting that portion of utility work out of the way makes sense. But we're not gonna be paving that road for another year plus. Uh, so uh, they endeavored to patch the road. Um, one could argue about the quality of the patch, Councillor Vincent. Uh, it's better than some of their patches, I would argue. However, they left the road an absolute mess along the curb line, was hot top and gravel, uh, and importantly, the sidewalk, which was our brand new sidewalk, uh, even tonight, is still littered with lots of gravel, hot top debris, stains. It's, it's, it's poorly. Uh, the site was not well managed. It does appear that uh, a sweeper made a pass along the curb edge today, and I don't know if that was done by Unitil or if our staff did it, and that's helped a little bit, but uh, I suggest that we uh, call on the maintenance bond that they had to post to do that work. Uh, if we need to hire a subcontractor to hand sweep the sidewalk, to re-sweep the road, because they didn't go far enough, uh, there's a catch basin at Garden that's filled with gravel still, uh, and to repaint the fog line that we just repainted not a month or two ago. Uh, so not happy with Unitil there. Uh, and why do they do this? Because they can. They're bullying us, right? Uh, we don't have enough staff to have eyes on it round the clock, uh, but we need to play hardball with them. They want to play hardball with us. We need to play hardball with them. Let me go next to Eversource. I think as I've shared before, uh, Eversource acquired all of the utility poles in the community that they didn't already own. Uh, in fact, most of the poles in the community prior to their takeover of them were owned by Consolidated. Uh, Eversource has since taken over all of the utility poles. So the good news there is that we're dealing with one bully and not two. Uh, Eversource, uh, to their credit, uh, wants to improve the uh, electrical infrastructure in the community, so they've embarked upon testing all of the utility poles for their uh, soundness. Uh, and they've identified, I, I believe, somewhere around 100 plus utility poles that need to be replaced in the city. Uh, they 
are supposed to apply for a trenching permit because that huge hole they dig in the ground is a trench through our public works staff. Uh, that trench permit dig triggers uh, identification of water lines and sewer lines, drain lines, dig safe permitting, if you will. Uh, and that has been done to some degree. But all of a sudden, their subcontractor, the Eversource subcontractor, I don't know if they got ahead of themselves, they didn't like the arduous process, but they have now just decided to start putting in utility poles at, at random. And the ones that are of most concern are the ones on city sidewalks. Uh, drive around the community. Uh, 345 High Street was my first example where uh, the sidewalk is five feet wide. Well, now it's maybe three because they put it in the sidewalk behind the other utility pole. If you take a ride up Green Street, not far from the, the new apartments that are being built, uh, you'll find that they have put them in the sidewalk there. Uh, and have uh, displaced the granite curbing as a result. Uh, and here's one for you. They leave all of the debris, all of the stuff that comes out of the hole on the sidewalk. There isn't a traffic cone, a barricade. And we know full well if someone trips over this construction debris, they're not going to sue Eversource. They're not going to sue their subcontractor. They're going to sue the city of Summersworth. What's going on here? Again, I'm not blaming our staff. It's hard to have eyes on things that we don't know that they're doing. But that is unacceptable. Uh, Indigo Hill Road now has like four or five telephone poles in the middle of the sidewalk that we fought for years to get them out of the sidewalk, if you remember. So the problem is pervasive, and all it is is Eversource being a bully, right? So uh, we, we need to push back here. Uh, in your honor, uh, between now and the next meeting, uh, I'll be drafting a letter uh, that uh, I'll run by city staff to make sure my data is accurate to send to both Unitil and to Eversource, uh, stating our displeasure that I'd like the council to vote on. Uh, and I would further like to copy the Public Utilities Commission on this letter. Uh, and uh, furthermore, request that a representative from both attend the next Public Works and Environment meeting uh, and speak about their, uh, what they're going to do to stop being a bully. Uh, so uh, I'll leave th those two there. I'll call out one other bully, uh, and that is the State of New Hampshire Department of Transportation. Uh, why do I call them a bully? Well, we know that we want to replace the water line on Main Street from Indigo Hill Road to the Rollinsford line. However, when you get to Netto Street, the segment between Netto Street and the Rollinsford line, that's actually state-maintained roadway. They recently repaved it last week. Uh, State of New Hampshire will not allow us to replace the water line in kind. Uh, they want us to put it off to the side of the road, which is land that we don't own. It would require purchase of land. It would require easements. It would require wetlands issues. Uh, so as you know, uh, this body voted to not proceed with that portion of the project. So we will proceed with the replacement of the water line from Indigo Hill Road to Netto Street and then leave the old water line under their road, which breaks over and over again because they won't allow us to dig in their roadway. Yet, when they do work on their roadways here in our community, like today, they wanted to repave Green Street. Well, they did repave Green Street, or at least started. They didn't have the courtesy to notify us of this. And it bollocked up traffic for Idlehurst Elementary School. And again, our staff had no knowledge of it. So State of New Hampshire DOT, you're a bully too. Get in line with Eversource and Unitil. Uh, I'm not sure we need to send a letter to them. They already know that we don't like them. Uh, but it, it's just painful, right? We're, we're, we're trying to do the right thing here in Summersworth. Uh, you know, this latest thing with the solar... Uh, field on the Superfund site and the uh, state of New Hampshire Department of Parks and Rec or whatever they're called saying hey no you can't stop slow down um, you know since this council back in 2011 I was part of that vote then uh, voted to discontinue St. Laurent Park uh, because you can't use it it's unsafe to use right uh, but I, th I think about all of the other park stuff that we've done we Although it wasn't like directly connected, we purchased 
Millennium Park from the General Electric Employees Association knowing that St. Laurent Park was no longer usable. It had fallen into a state of disrepair. I wonder if that counts, right? Or the hundreds of thousands of dollars we put into all of our parks, right? So I find it disingenuous that we haven't uh, tried to do our part, right? Uh, so we'll put them in as a bully as well. So a lot of bullies around us, and I, I think we need to push back and call them out for what they are. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, Councillor Goodwin. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just to, while that's on top of mind, I, I guess um, I would maybe add to the term bully or use a different word, which is incompetence, because uh, with, when those who are in power are incompetent, it uh, has implications, and those implications, uh, those that do not have the power authority um, to change uh, are harmed by them. So uh, I would think that's actually a worse term, really. They're, they're showing their incompetence. Um, I wanted to thank uh, Councillor Austin for his service, former Councillor Austin for his service, um, and uh, welcome Laura Berry to the Council. I'm very excited to be serving with you and working with you, um, so welcome. <clears throat> um, on the assessments, uh, you know, I can't say, as someone who's recently bought a home in Summersworth, that I was surprised. Um, as someone that works in real estate development that has studied uh, housing economics, land economics, uh, I'm also not surprised. Uh, this is a symptom uh, of the housing crisis that we are in. Uh, we need more housing. Um, and particularly, we're learning we need more affordable housing so that uh, legacy members of our working class community can afford uh, to live here um, and their children can afford to live here and they can age in place here. But in order to achieve that in a market-based economy, we need to plan and work closely with our uh, housing authority, the Summersworth Housing Authority, to plan and build affordable housing. Uh, this is a conversation that the Mayor's Housing Task Force is um, it, having. This is um, mentioned, affordable housing is mentioned in the housing chapter that was recently adopted. Um, but I just want to be very explicit that affordable housing is not built without subsidy, and we need to be mindful about where that comes from, and we need to put our money where our mouth is because it will not happen without, uh, without work. Um, the prices will most likely continue to rise, and people that have the least means will be affected and pushed out, and then we will be the incompetent bully. So. I just want to make sure that that's very clear. Um, these conversations are, are happening. Um, things are not going to happen overnight. There's a planning process that needs to occur and uh, a lot of work around um, housing efforts like that. Um, but just to emphasize, again, the urgency in light of the assessments um, for doing more on, on building housing in Summersworth and particularly around uh, building more affordable housing. Um, and I, I also agree, I just wanted to say that I agree with Councillor Vincent. Um, I think our communication around um, the assessments can be greatly improved. Um, we caused a lot of undue heartburn. There would have been, obviously, concern seeing your assessment triple in value is you know, not going to go uh, without a raised eyebrow or an increased heart rate, <laughs> um, as it were. But if we were better coordinated with the assessing firm, we would have been able to provide a memo um, and have the political courage to provide an estimate of a tax rate and you know, the uh, ability to you know, explain clearly in our memo that this is an estimate, that the state is going to have to do it. But just so you know, so if you are doing a back of the envelope math between now and when the tax rate is set, here's, here's the number. I would recommend you use until the state sets it. Like that is a very simple thing that I think we can do moving forward, and and, and I hope we can accomplish that. Um, other than that, I'm done. Thanks. Thank you so much. All right, that brings us to agenda item 19, which is future agenda items. I have Your a Honor, if yes. I may add, I'd like to have a vote under other to send uh, letters to Unitil and Eversource as a vote that Absolutely, evening. I have that uh, written down as well. So, yep, we will include that for our next meeting, um, a letter to send to Unitil and Eversource to vote on. 
and, and the New Hampshire PUC, is that right? Uh, copy to them. Copy to them. Um, I also have written down as for next agenda items, um, there was a mention of elderly exemption limits. I'm gonna send that to the Finance Committee. Um, discussion on Public Works dumpsters will go to the Public Works Environment Committee. Um, the discussion on reevaluations more frequently I will send to Finance. And I think those are all the ones that I miss any from tonight. I, I know at the, the last meeting, so I'll just mention it here just sure. to have it on the record. Uh, Councilor Parity Catanzaro asked that the Finance Committee also discuss uh, perhaps a supplemental appropriation for additional funding for Coast Bus. Ah, yes. Thank you. Yes, that was mentioned. So, yes, that will go to Finance as well. Thank you for when they meet. Others for new agenda items or future agenda items? Okay, great. Um, that brings us to agenda item 20, which is, which is non-public sessions. We have none. Uh, brings us to agenda item 21, which I'll is adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Councillor Vincent moves that the City Council stand in adjournment until the next regularly scheduled meeting, seconded by Councillor Parity Count Zero. Question for the Council is adjournment. If you're in favor, you'll stay by saying aye. If you're opposed, you'll stay by saying nay. All in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? All right, Council stands in adjournment. Thank you.